Okay, fault code cleared. This is not a bad little fault code scanner. Well, how's it going, big toes? <laughs> I was just um, giving it some thought what I was what I was talking about yesterday, and you know, I was like, the plans for uh, buying the camper and everything were like really gelling, and I was like really excited, but um, then I was just having. I'm I'm a very intuitive guy, <laughs> and and I was just having these misgivings, and well, it was almost a full blown panic attack. <laughs> and um, I'm sort of a big fan of sort of you know listening to how you're feeling about certain things, and because uh, those uh, the heart um, can really be wise in a lot of things and if you ignore what it's telling you like continuing a relationship with a shitty woman for example <laughs> um you can really have a problem right um so i was like you know why am i feeling like this i was like heart was like racing and i was like man this is this is crazy i was that was smoke was coming off the calculator keys and and then I just had to uh, take a step back and, and think about it. And I was like, <clears throat> well, what I'm expecting, right now we're at the bottom of the freaking Bitcoin market, right? I mean, it's been bouncing off 6,000 for like, you know, most of the year. And, um, and now we're breaking through the triangle, you know, the, the downtrend. And it's like, now it's starting to trade above that triangle where it usually starts diving down as soon as it like touches it um, all year whenever it's touched the top of that that line it's turned and crashed down right and now it's trading above that line <clears throat> and it's and it just reinforces the uh my opinion that bitcoins have bottomed and um and we are going to be turning around I, I expect, you know, reasonably slowly, um, for example, 2013, big, huge bubble, then uh, all through 2014 was that slow motion crash, and then 2015 it bottomed out, and that year was the bottom, and then during that year it doubled from like uh, 200 to like 500 or so, right? Then 2016, it doubled again uh, from about 500 to 1,000. And um, then 2017, it like, uh, you know, the bubble occurred, right? So what I'm thinking is that we've pretty much bottomed. And now we're going to consolidate probably for another six months or so. And then, uh, then we'll have our next big, huge bull run, right? But over the next... Over the next six months or so, I fully expect bitcoins to double back to like maybe, maybe twelve or thirteen thousand, and then sometime after that we'll have our big huge bubble. Unless, of course, Wall Street distorts, distorts it and decides to dump a bunch of money, in which case it'll happen sooner than I thought. So, then and then I was like thinking, wow, if I sell the house, I might save myself maybe a hundred thousand dollars over the next two years um, if the crash is like what I expect it to be now that's a hundred thousand dollars but but if uh, bitcoins do what I think they're gonna do I mean I I will have like many many times that loss um, 
over the next uh, couple years in Bitcoin, right? So basically the house is just not all that relevant. So what I think, I'm gonna have to listen to my feelings here. I did the math and I, the math backs up my feelings. And I'm gonna have to, I mean, as much as I might be accused of flip-flopping, <laughs> I'm going to have to table my plan to buy that camper and become a mobile uh, mechanic for the time being. And I'm going to, uh, instead, I'm going to continue as I have been. I'm going to work my job, even though I'm, I was feeling a little di out of uh, sorts yesterday. I was feeling like not very content and I was feeling restless and man, I just wanted to get out, you know. But um, I'm going to, I'm going to... Uh, have some patience here and I'm going to continue buying bitcoins. I buy about a thousand dollars at worth every paycheck. I'm going to keep socking away those bitcoins because I am I am convinced that over the next uh, four years or so they are going to explode in value beyond beyond most people's far imagination. It's going to be like probably three or four hundred thousand dollars per bitcoin in which case man i would be i think it would be a bad mistake for me to stop buying them now and start spending them uh when i at this price um so i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to flip-flop here and i'm going to uh instead i'm just gonna Keep working my mechanic job, keep buying those Bitcoins until maybe they double to like 12,000 or so. In which case then I will re, I'll pull the plans to retire back out and put them out on the workbench and take them apart and see, see how they, the logic flows, see how the math works, you know. Then I might add different pieces to the, to the retirement plan and, and maybe remove a few pieces and, uh, arrange things around a little bit so that it's a more effective machine then put it all back together again and light it off so um so basically that's the plan <laughs> i am going to i'm going to like hold on for now i'm gonna get more comfortable in my house here do a little more maintenance because i mentally checked out of this place like a year ago and um and I'm going to just keep marching along, keep buying those Bitcoins until they hit like 12 grand or so, in which case then I'll probably stop. But it would make more sense for a lot of people uh, who haven't got a big, huge stack of Bitcoins to, uh, to keep buying them even at that point. Because I expect the next bubble in Bitcoin to be like eighty or $90,000 before, before it tops out and starts another slow motion decline over like maybe five or six months right so um <clears throat> yeah so that's the plan and once i do retire though i have i haven't changed my plans about uh taxes i'm going to draw bitcoins down slow enough so that i don't qualify for i for income tax right According to the IRS's own rules on long-term capital gains, I will, uh, as long as I keep my capital gain under $38,600 a year, then I don't have to pay income tax. So I am a big fan of that. That's half the reason I started buying Bitcoins in the first place. I was just sick of being on this plantation and paying money in for... Uh, for things that I disagree with, like importing massive amounts of third world incompatible people to this country. And um, like Obama was flying them in on UPS planes, supposedly. And um, and it's just, and then of course, blowing up weddings in uh, foreign countries and wrecking their infrastructure and, and triggering those people to migrate, you know, um, it's, and then, of course, feminist programs, you know, to uh, destroy and genocide our native population. And the, yes, the people who were born here are native. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I'm tired of paying for that shit. So um, if I keep my capital gains down that low, 
I can live a frugal, comfortable lifestyle and not have to pay anything to the IRS. So that's a big, that's a big plus if you ask me. So guys, sorry to jerk you around. <laughs> um, that camper idea may be uh, on the table still. Um, what, another thing that convinced me not to get it is that uh, my parking spot out here is there's power lines and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, phone lines and cable lines and everything that are hanging down so low that I can't park there with the camper, right? So I would have to figure out something else. So, okay, that's about all I got for you today. And don't get married.